Evil Democracy 1932 is a pretty well made simulation and strategy game where you try to prevent World War II from happening by influencing the masses and falsifying voting records. I'm Ipa from Indie Game Guides and today I present to you my complete guide for Evil Democracy 1932. I want to thank the developers Hamster Gaming for sponsoring this video through Indie Boost and giving me the opportunity to make a guide for it. First off, what should you expect from this guide? Now there is a tutorial that you can select immediately from the main menu, but personally I didn't find it too helpful. So I decided to make my own little guide on how everything works and while explaining it also give you more than a few tips so you will never do bad in this game again. Sounds good? Let's get started. When starting a new game you get to choose between three countries in different time periods. Now of course something is always going to be a little bit different like the map, political parties and so on, but the general gameplay mechanics stay the same over all three countries. In the top left corner you have some general information like the number of voters, sponsors, staff, available budget and how much money you will get every turn. Below that you have the top ranking 5 parties and preferably you will want to be on top as much as possible. At the top right corner you can see how many turns there are left until the next elections, on which turn you are and how to skip to the next one. In the center you have buttons that will lead to the same pages as the bottom ones do, so we'll go over them in the same order you should use them when starting a game. First thing you need to do after starting a new game is to go over to the leaders page and at the top you can see 7 positions you may assign leaders to. Now these can basically be split up into 5 categories. Edition, which assigns a leader as a newspaper editor, which will help the effectiveness of newspapers that you will be printing out next. At a rally where the leader will help the effectiveness of demonstrations, strikes and protests. Sponsors who are responsible for increasing the amount of sponsors you get. The treasurer makes sure you get more income between turns from those sponsors. And the elections guy is basically responsible for falsifying the votes when the elections are not going your way. Now, which leader you assign for which position is entirely up to you. But if you want to know who will be the best for which position, there is a very easy way. Just click on the position and the game will highlight which of the four attributes matter the most for that specific position. Just pick the leader with the highest attributes for that specific position. Now to get more leaders, you can either hire them or get them by completing events. And you can change which leader holds which position whenever you want. But just know he will not be available for any positions the next five turns. I guess he's just angry for 5 turns with you for changing his position. In my opinion I think you should appoint your first leader as a treasurer so you can get more cash to play around with at the start and afterwards I'd make appointing the newspaper editor and the sponsor my priority, but eventually all seats should be filled. Normally the next thing you should do is picking a dogma, but to help you with that decision you really need to understand how everything else works, so let's go over to the journalist instead. If you move the sliders all the way to the right and hit find, the game will give you all available journalists you can get right now. They each have four attributes being newspaper, leaflets, investigation and interview. To explain how these skills work and how many journalists you need with a high skill in one of these four categories, let's just go over to the next page called editorial team. In the editorial team you can see how it, everything will be set up. Now at the top we have one position for leaflets and five positions for newspapers of which some you will need to unlock with the money or currency whatever you're earning. Now basically the journalists you assign at the top spot will add to the effectiveness of the newspapers of leaflets much like the leader that you placed in the first position in back in the leaders page. To know which journalist should really just get this job, so once again click on the position and then you can just see at the attributes that are marked with a square which ones are the best for that position. But only the journalists on the bottom row can actually write articles. Now if you click on one of them you can give them a task. You can let them write one of three kinds of articles. An interview with one of your party leaders, get compromising materials on a specific party so they lose income, or slander a specific party to make them lose voters. You can only print a newspaper every 5 turns and it will only feature up to 3 articles. So in essence you only need 3 journalists on the bottom row. So to save you some money just get only 3 journalists to write the articles since you can only publish 3 articles each time. So to break it down you basically need 1 journalist with a high attribute for the leaflets. You need 5 journalists with high newspaper skills for the top row when you can afford it. And for the bottom I'd go for 3 journalists 
basically one with a great interview ability for that specific article and two with great investigation attributes to slander and collect compromising articles on your opponents. But the best tip that I can give you for the journalist is basically to always be checking the market once again. Now, as the turns pass, journalists with higher attributes will come on the job market. So now and then just fire your entire editorial steam and just replace them all with new blood because they will have much higher attributes. On the print page, you can set up which articles you'd like to publish in your newspaper and how many get printed and how many promoters will be used to bring them to the people. Promoters are basically paper boys, but we will come back to those a little bit later. Now, in general, I just check the box for optimal circulation, so the game will always pick the best amount of newspapers and leaflets to send. And on the right side, I pick the print maximum article, so it will always pick the best articles to publish each five turns. Now, checking these two boxes basically makes the entire printing process automated. And now what I actually want you to do for some turns is just, you know, run the game for a few turns. So you get at least a monthly income of 1 million because the next part is going to be really expensive. And in the meantime, I want to quickly mention that you can always hit me up on Twitter and also be sure to check out our Discord community in the description down below as it is steadily growing to become a home for more than a few indie game enthusiasts. And if you want to have a vote on which indie game gets featured next, be sure to subscribe because we often organize open questions and do polls to decide which games gets a series of guides next. Now with that out of the way, let's move on. Let's move on to the staff. Now when you click on this option you get the possibility to hire three kinds of workers. The promoters are essentially the paper boys who will deliver your newspaper to the people. Generally you don't need too many of them. So if you don't want to lose more money than you need to, just hire the required amount of paper boys you need through the printing page. That way you will never hire more than you need to. Now on the other hand, the two roles, the agitators and activists, are basically the same thing. Except the difference between them is minimal and the activists are super expensive. Now I think the agitators are mainly people who make your ruckus and activists are more for recruiting voters or something. I've tested both of them and if you want my advice, don't hire the activists. They will bankrupt you in no time and they really aren't worth it. But you definitely should invest into agitators. Using them really makes a big difference in this game and honestly I don't think you can win without using them. Now if you followed my advice and waited till you have about 1 million income, hire enough agitators to bring you down to about 200,000 income and over time increase their numbers even further. But now let's put them to the work. Now go to the map and there you will see the country split up into different parts. To send the agitators to work, click on agitation and then you can choose how many to send. Now of course you'll want all of them to go to work, so pick 100%. Then you can decide where they'll go. Now, it pretty much explains itself, but I always go for the 25% of the regions with the lowest percentage of voters. Now, basically, they're going to be rallying everyone up to our cause, and you will be wanting to withdraw and send your troops every few terms. I do this every five terms, the same turn as when the printing press becomes available. Now, the reason behind it is just to constantly keep recruiting voters and taking the support away from enemy parties. So for that reason, it's really a good idea to do this more than often. And in case you're using activists anyway, this system pretty much works the same way for them. The very first button on the bottom in the map page, protests, is something you really need capital for. Now if you click on this, you will notice that you can do demonstrations, strikes and protests in the four different areas on the country. Now for these things to be worth it, you really need a really charismatic leader, preferably two. And you can auto play this on top of the screen because there is about 25 turns between each time you can do a demonstration, strike or protest. But do yourself a favor and just wait until you have more than enough income because they are expensive as hell. Okay, so let's go over the last few general pages. Now, dogmas are the last big part we really, really need to talk about because only a few are activated at any time and choosing one can remove your ability to pick certain ones the next time you get to choose. Since we've almost talked about all the mechanics, now you can make some educated guesses. Now, generally, I'll go for dogmas that will give me more profit, votes, better statuses for my party leaders, reduced costs for staff or printing. If I can avoid, I will just avoid dogmas that will make me lose voters as that is the most important thing in the end of the game. The game will also ask the parties every now and then to elect a new slogan for your party. Now here I generally go for reduced costs for my printing or staff and that way I can spend even more on those resources. 
But the slogan button at the end actually also hides something quite important. When you choose slogans, every party picks one based on their political trust points. By completing these objectives, the more political trust points you'll get and the earlier you'll be able to pick up one of the best slogans. They aren't really hard to complete and you'll probably unlock them all over time by playing, but it's still something to keep an eye out for. Lastly, we have coalitions, which is important for two things. First off, if one possible coalition has enough votes after an election, you can assign ranks among your coalition members, which basically helps you win the game. Now, here's the second point. Don't even slander or look for compromising material for your potential coalition members, because you want them to perform well. The better they do, the bigger their chances is that your coalition will get into the new government. But they don't need to perform better than you do, if you catch my drift. Now, debates are yet to be implemented at the time of this video, so I can't really talk about those. And events are quite important, as they can give you free sponsors, dogmas, or leaders. But I wouldn't be hiring tons of activists to complete them either. Just always, you know, kind of use your common sense. And that's basically it. Now, if you follow with this guide, you probably won't even need to falsify votes. But what's the fun in that? If you found this guide useful, be sure to give the video a thumbs up so other people can find it too. And if you want to see more content like this one, consider subscribing. We publish three guides like this one every week and we would love to get your input in our open questions and polls on the community page. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.